I consider that the art object is a burden, it has become inessential. In the present context, removing is a major gesture. Our opinion of authorship, based upon the idea that there is one single author behind each work of art, is a delusion, a shortcut that has to be rethought. The exhibition is an outdated stylistic device that needs to be abandoned in favor of other approaches such as maneuvers or operations. So for me, this is a typical situation. This was in the Grand Palais two years ago. It's a typical exhibition. The, the name was Force de l'Art. So, and we, I, I consider that we have to say bye-bye to that kind of event. And we have to change things. So instead of work of art, Subtraction instead of exhibition, operation instead of single author, collaboration. As an artist working in the Biennale de Paris, I propose services. These services privilege experience, assuming their full meaning in the leap from speculation to execution, they do their best to trip up routine. In place of a limited but profitable commodity art, they propose the open-ended, evolving principle of services, collaborative effort based on the radical element of nasty surprises. I will give you examples. It is a story in the making, and each new participation contributes an additional episode. And this is what I call a service. Instructions that are waiting to be put into practice to be used. Example, fight the power, externalization of repressed tensions, spirit of rebellion, animosity, hatred. The service, the service provides the necessary assistance for this act of eradication. And here we have an example. It was in, in, the, in the kitchen of Guilin this year. So the image top is before the activation and then bottom is after. And uh, you can see the, the, the thing, uh, right side, it's a detail. It's a broken mirror in the kitchen. And the, the kitchen was painted by uh, Bernard Bruno 10 years ago. No, no, no. More, more than 10 years. OK. So this is an activation of the problem. When someone asks me to qualify my practice, I said that instead of displaying art products, I operate in everyday reality. What does it mean precisely? For me, this is what this expression signifies. To operate in everyday reality characterizes an art practice that relegates art to the background in order to conquer everyday reality. To complete this definition, I would also say that most of the time to operate in everyday reality is an infringement. This is why to operate in everyday reality has to be done without somebody knowing it in an unfair kind of way. Lastly, the intention to relegate art to the background differentiates to operate in everyday reality from previous famous designations such as happenings or performances. In passing, let's remember that, uh, let's remember that Capro rejected these two names as he was trying to define his approach. This manner to consider art practice is in a way a response to several thinkers all active in the early 60s. In the Critic of Everyday Life, 1961, the French philosopher Henri Lefebvre offers us to come back to everyday life in order to turn it upside down from top to bottom. I don't know if there uh, is there a translation of yes, this book? Yes, Okay, that's nice. Uh, in his mind, there is no need to elaborate massive revolution, revolutionary projects. If it's still possible to reform or to transform, it's to, it's to a lesser extent. Influenced by the by Lefebvre, the Situationists, that were a political group, 1958-1969, proposed moments elaborated as situations 
as works of art. And here you can see the French cover of uh, the B edition the, of, of uh, Anton Saint-Situs in France. Um, curiously, and for me, this aim has to be understood as a kind of a new step in art history, these constructed situations were very similar, or should we say, were nearly identical to situations already existing in everyday reality. For example, the drift, and maybe you know this kind of operation, drifting from bar to bar, somewhere. <laughs> during a long time, day, day after day, the drift, okay, from situation. In his text, Art, Art Which Can Be Art, 1986, the American artist Alan Capro characterizes better than everyone else an art practice consisting in context and activity that don't suggest, that, that don't suggest art in any way. Brushing my, my teeth, for example. This lifelike impulse drives the artist to suffer a weird paradox. Artist, cons I quote, artist concerned with lifelike art is an artist who does and does not make art. Finally, the French sociologist Michel de Certeau in The Practice of Everyday Life, 1980, encourages coaching which he describes as a perfect attitude and unquestionable state of mind. De Certeau demonstrates how cheap shots represent a thrilling strategy for the weak, a tactical approach intended for the reappropriation of the realm of the strong. Let's see now how my services function in practical terms. I operate in everyday reality through two identities, Ikea services and glitch. Thanks to these two identities, I spread services mostly outside of the art field. Here are some examples of my services. Cancellation of spaces, the temporary seizure of a space, physical or virtual design by the client. And now I show you some pictures. So I don't explain this too long, but maybe after we can speak about this. Uh, there is several situations of cancellation of spaces in different places from 2003 to now. Okay. Another service, upgrade, an action designed to increase the value of a thing, state, or situation. And here my idea was, for example, to upgrade the famous beer in France, which is 86. Uh, maybe it's Bavaria, it's, uh, I think, Hollandais from Netherlands, you know this beer down here. So at this time, it was in 2004, I think, the standard in France. The, the strongest beer was 8.6, and the idea was to upgrade 8.6 to 8.7. And then we've done that uh, in an industry, industri industrial way, and this is the result, 8.7. So it was really strong. Another service, to lie, to lie deliberately, and of course here we don't need any pictures. Slow mo to act with an exaggerated slowness. I would like now to explore this last one, slow mo, which belongs to the collection of Centre National des Arts Plastiques in Paris. To act with an exaggerated slowness, this is how these instructions for use have been applied in various circumstances. In the context of an inauguration in 2008, the activation of the service consisted in slowing down, without somebody knowing it, the work of a waiter who was in charge of the buffet, predominantly filled with drinks. More than two days of training were necessary to make imperceptible this speedful action in order to erase its funny aspect. Here are the strategies employed on the T-Day to achieve the ends. 
Only a single person was selected to be on duty even though numerous guests were in attendance. The waiter had an insufficient number of glasses and bowls for that precise reason, often compelled to leave the place where we were serving in order to wash a few glasses, and this uh, was done in the restroom. restroom. <laughs> Thank you, Dina. After that, it was of course necessary to dry these glasses and then to give them out to a growing crowd. The buffet was endowed with only one blunt corkscrew that you can see here on the right side top. After two hours of madness, this almost ideal execution of slow-mo finished brutally when some slowness objectors bought some plastic caps in the next doors. Grass's job. In 2010, in a different places, the experience consisting in slowing down a waiter during a private viewing was attempted for the second time. Uh, of course, the exhibition is still viewable uh, here, left, left side top, but it is clear that it has been relegated to the background and I was not clearly part of it anymore. The crucial thing happen, happens somewhere else. In my opinion, the right part of this photo montage here describes very well the leap, or should I say the fall, of the spectator when he leaves the rapture of the exhibition to embrace the unkind reality of the vernissage buffet. Vernissage buffet. Okay, so we come to drink in general. We don't see exhibition, but we want to drink, and then the artwork, the artwork has to deal with that. As well, in 2010, the service was put into practice on the occasion of a huge cultural event. It was somewhere else. It was in Toulouse and Paris in France. This time, my idea was to propose to people working for this event to slow down an offer that caused, of course, several small disasters in the organization of that event. For example, delayed tasks, and it, in that precise case, uh, the cleaning up was not done when the opening was begging someone who was finishing the, the cleaning up, so it was um, horrible. I have written a variant of slow-mo, I've named it to waste one's time. The instructions for use of the service are very simple. To put it, to put it into practice, you just have to waste your time to squander it. This may be interesting to put to West Weinstein into practice here in the United States where the, where the expression time is money is particularly appreciated. I will close my lecture with this classical question, what's at stake here? And here I would like you to, to read again our motto in the Behind the House. Uh, through practicing a mixture, mixture of genres, exploiting the propriety of frontiers and the redistribution of rules, the Bienal de Paris allows art to appear precisely where we don't expect it. So, by operating in everyday reality, the artist contrasts essential gestures with an art practice that is becoming more and more pompous. To be furious, to cancel, to upgrade, to lie, to slow down, all of that already exists in everyday reality. And this is precisely why I'm so interested in such gestures. Operating in everyday reality refocuses our practice on strong intentions, intentions that don't necessitate appearing in the art field as articles of trade. It allows our practice to be more than a similar problem. And finally, it gives the artist the force to stand back and to be more than an undying underling. I finish with an advertising. You can read the, it's a, it's a quotation. And then my uh, email if you want to get in touch with me. Thank you very much.